What's going on? And welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour, a podcast where we talk to the most interesting people in the world of pop culture and everything in between. And this week on the show, we are joined by the guitar player from the band Destroy Boys. All right, uh, really, really happy to be back here with you on the Rockman Power Hour. I'm going to bring in my co-host, Ryan Stick, right out of the gate. Ryan, um, we've been so busy lately, and um, you and I have been um, literally from Comic-Cons to going to... Um, Fantasia. Music, Fantasia, Music for Cancer. We've just been doing so much. Yeah, man, very busy, but at the same time, uh, we just want to give a special shout-out to our own Instagram accounts because uh, I'm at Ryan Stick Show. Jason is the real Jason Rockman, not the fake Jason Rock- Rockman, but the real Jason Lee Rockman. No, it's it's the real Jason Rockman on Instagram, yes. correct? Yeah, exactly. And, and of course, the Rockman Power Hour, if you want to follow that, because that is the only place so far that you could check out our interviews from Music for Cancer, unless popular demand changes that or thin veiled threats. Uh, Instagram is the only place you could check out these amazing interviews that we got, including with Toby from H2O, recounting how he jumped into the audience and sang the entirety of the show succumbed by humans it's yeah. uh it's some it's a sight to see we also have footage of it happening on the instagram account so yeah rockman power hour on instagram is a force to be reckoned with and that's the thing if you follow our show in any capacity whether if it's the insta is if it's the instagram version the youtube version or strictly the audio version each one of them has a unique uh, reason for existing that I like to think so you know it's like the Marvel Universe follow all of it watch the shows buy the shirts and you know <laughs> yeah no we, we I think every once in a while when we're out doing stuff it's fun to do content that can be created a little bit quicker and um, and that can get out a little faster especially when it's an event that's happening in real time so uh, yeah definitely check out all of our interviews that we did for Music for Cancer on our Instagram accounts and um, and follow us on all of our socials because there's sometimes as was witnessed this past weekend um bonus content that you can only get in one form and that is on instagram for the for music for cancer so and a big shout out to jay and to his entire team hughes and everyone else there for uh, just you know really really making us feel like family out of the gate and we will definitely be back for 2025 we absolutely love that festival God, i love it i love it and anybody out there who is just like man i fell in love with like 90s punk this is like heaven this yeah, is definitely. so this is so cool. Punk punk rock is still alive and well and it exists in these little corners of Quebec. I would say Quebec never forgot the love for uh, uh 90s style punk rock. It's it's could fucking not, amazing. Yeah. Could not agree more. And you know, being someone who saw it the first time when it first happened, um it's nice to see all these people wanting to be a part of a scene that existed and saying like, "Hey, I love these bands. I want to be a part of this." Cuz when it first happened, when it first caught, it was pretty crazy. We recorded this interview quite a while back with uh, Violet from the band Destroy Boys, who's the uh, guitar player, and um, kind of wanted to get this one out because they put out a brand new record. Um, it is phenomenal. It's called Funeral Soundtrack Number 4. This album came out way back in August on Hopeless Records, and they're going to be coming to Montreal on the 12th of November, um, and they're going to be playing at Théâtre Fermont. So uh, why don't we get this out to people so they can hear because we had a really great conversation with Violet. Um, she's got great stories. She, they've been backed up by some of the best bands um, out there right now that have put their stamp of approval on them. And uh, it was a really, really fun conversation because for me, you know, when you've, you know, when you've got people out there that are doing music, especially from a young age and Destroy Boys started out a, a fairly young band, um, when you see them come into their own, kind of like the Linda Lindas, kind of like the Warning. I love these bands that start out really young and then become these powerhouses because they've been honing their craft for so long. And um, and that's kind of what happened with uh, with Destroy Boys. They just became this this force to be reckoned with. And if you listen to their music, it's super, super powerful and super catchy, well-written songs. Um, so I, I really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, I enjoyed this conversation too. So funny enough, I can't remember why... I didn't participate. I think it was just too much was crap. T- too much time. crap was happening off screen, and there wasn't time. But I was there to like monitor it. Yeah. So, so ironically, you guys go down this Green Day talk, 
rabbit hole and yeah. it took everything in me to like not just join in without the mic and the cameras and everything to just contribute in some kind of way so i, I don't want to give anything else away but uh this is one of those great interviews and this is um you know i feel a real kindred spirit in the green day fandom that she has but uh, yeah. i don't know without further ado let's uh let's talk about our sponsors before we jump into this one right yeah let's do that right away yeah. um Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour. If you follow us on our social media and you see anything that we've been doing, I don't know why this is here, uh, you'd notice that um, we love Heartbeat Hot Sauce, not only because they're our title sponsor, because they're the best hot sauce in the world. And I wanted to shed light on this one, the Pineapple Habanero. If you've not tried this one, uh, it's great. It's a little between a medium and a hot, and you can find that right on their hot meter on the back of their hot sauce. Uh, phenomenal stuff. Small batch fermenters out of Thunder Bay, Ontario. And if you use our promo code ROCKMAN20, you'll get 20% off your entire order. And that promo code never, never goes away. So use it as much as you can. And uh, great time to be giving this stuff away in the fall because, uh, you know, fall, everyone's into their pumpkin spice this and pumpkin spice that. Um, but anything fruity with a bit of a bite, I find really, really works uh, on so many things. And uh, if you haven't tried this yet, man, definitely, definitely, Ryan, uh, I know you have, but definitely try uh, Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Try the Pineapple Habanero and uh, use our promo code ROCKMAN20. Get 20% off your entire order. Also, thank you to Studio House Designs for always hooking us up with great shirts. They are out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and they do um, great work. I am a big, big fan of the thing, and I will get up for this one, Ryan, because it's a special occasion. Look at the Stand design. Stand up, my friend. Look at this thing. Look at that. Well, I'm going to describe it to the people who listen to the audio only version of this podcast. Jason's wearing an incredible thing shirt. A very interesting interpretation. The strength of Studio House is that they will take up, they pretty much make a movie poster that doesn't exist. Yes. And, exactly and should exist, well and then slap it on a shirt. So, they you do. know, yeah. So shout out to them and also to our friends over at Audio Technica Canada for hooking us up with this great gear. Um, and our friend Mike Marino always um, helping us and being a great, great partner to the show as well. All right, let's jump into this right now, Ryan, shall we? We yeah. have a great conversation here with Violet Mayugba from the band Destroy Boys. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. Thanks for thanks for jumping in. I appreciate it. Oh my god! Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm really excited to see this band because I've heard nothing but good things. Um, you're going to be in Montreal November 12th, so it's a bit of a ways off. But you've got a lot of stuff going on before that. Um, a record um, tours like crazy. You're going to the UK. Where are you right now? I'm at my house in Los Angeles. Nice. What part uh, of LA are you in? I'm in Eagle Rock. Oh, sweet. Very sweet. Yeah, I am very lucky. I live as a tenant. Like my our producer who produced Funeral Soundtrack number four is my landlord. Oh, nice. So he works in the backyard. So I can just like go use the studio and hang out. And it's amazing. Work. Yeah. Talk I'm about that's super convenient. So you're in L.A. Um, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Sacramento, as is Alexia. Right. Yeah. So, so you guys are from Sacramento. Um, you're touring pretty much. I mean, when I look at your tour dates, you guys tour everywhere. Like you guys have, you're really, really able to get out and go to a lot of different places, including Canada, including the UK. The band's been going since 2015, but it seems like there's something popping right now around this band. You know, you, 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 I, and I'm sure you feel it too. Um, what do you think's been different of late for Destroy Boys? Well, we had like a little TikTok moment, 2019. Yeah, that was really cool. I think that kind of talk a bit about that because maybe some people don't yeah. people don't really because yeah. that because I remember that. So you've been following us for a second. Yeah, yeah. I I, I keep I keep, for lack of a better word, I keep abreast on what's going on. <laughs> Always. I've it's, never it's, heard that term. That's in my mind. that's my mother's expression. My mom's oh, like God 75. Bless, She's please. always like, you have to keep abreast of what's going on. Because I'm gonna add that to my vocab for sure. It, it's a great one, <laughs> but I but I really do keep I keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on, especially with indie music. And cool. yeah, so this is a band that's kind of like I said, it's been been on my radar for a while now, but. But it's true because in 2019, there was this little spike where you saw, you know, I think there was the, the, the help of socials and of course of TikTok. But talk a bit about what happened on TikTok in 2019. So 2019 was when TikTok was still competing with that app musically. Like it wasn't the way that it is now where it's completely dominating all culture. I'm sorry, there's a car going by. All good. 
It's authentic. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's my boyfriend's cleaning the house and he's blasting some sort of art rock album. And I was like, this can't happen. So it's well, okay. Don't worry about it. Um, so TikTok wasn't really like the core of the music industry. It is today. Um, but we were one of the first like rock bands, not the first, but just one yeah. of the earlier rock bands that had a song go viral on there. Um, we had no push behind it. We were 19 years old. We didn't have a label. We didn't have, you know, we had just gotten management for the right. first time ever, like three months ago, and they had nothing to do with it. Um, no shade. They just didn't. And yeah. was, <laughs> um, we started getting this like crazy influx of followers being like, your song is viral, your song, blah, 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 blah. And it's our song, I Threw Glass in My Friend's Eyes and Now I'm on Probation, which is from our first record, Sorry Mom. Right. We made that record when we were 16 and it has no bass. It did not record to a click and we recorded, mixed and mastered it in 10 hours. It is an insane album. Wow. I love it. I love it. it. But that's that. But those are the kind of stories that, you know, when you're 15, 20 years into a career that people are going to love. Thank you. It's, it's funny to tell now, you know, yeah. cause I think that since the band is doing a little bit better now, which mm. we're so lucky for, I think people think that we kind of like popped up out of nowhere, but yeah. Dude, we're coming up on a decade of being into store boys. That's, that's what I mean. And it's like, people don't realize like whenever somebody, and this is the same story, no matter who you talk to, whenever a band achieves a certain amount of success and they kind of seem like they're coming out of nowhere, there's always a ton of hard work that is behind that. And it's like those memes where you see, you know, you'll see an iceberg and it's poking out yeah. and you see the top and then underneath that's you see, that's exactly what it is for any band that, that achieves success. Very few bands achieve success after being together for six months, you know, and, and yeah. if they do, it's because they probably all came from other bands where they've been slugging it out. And then this combination just worked. That is very true. Yeah. So, but, really but, but the fact that. that, but the fact that this band now is, you know, I, I love the fact that, I'm having people come up to me and go, have you heard of Destroy Boys? I'm like, yeah. And it's, so it's just nice to see, it's just nice to see bands that are, you know, that put the work in and then are starting to, you know, I don't want to say reap the rewards, but are starting to get the recognition they deserve. So, um, you That's have, the, nice. well, it's true. It's true. And, you know, I, the new release is, is really, really cool. Um, it's the fourth one. It's, I, I hate saying that I can hear influences because it's, it's oh, so really? like it's lazy, but the music I grew up on, which is, you know, I grew up in the eighties. So for me, I, you know, that first wave of like all that awesome stuff that everybody looks at, you know, nostalgically now I hear it and it's almost like you're the, this, this you know, the, the bastard children of those bands, you know, it's like the, yeah. Smiths and the echo and the Bunnymen had a baby or, or, you know, all these other influences. So awesome. tell me about when you guys started writing music, what, what influenced you guys and were they as, as simple as those influences or were, was it something that completely was not at all in that wheelhouse, but just ended up kind of falling in that, on that path. When we started writing music or when we started writing the record, when you started writing music in general. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> when I started writing music, I was 13 and I literally just wrote green day songs with different <laughs> lyrics. Right. Like I would be like, this song is amazing. And then I'd be like, Oh, this is basket case. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, but, but that's common when you talk to a lot of artists, like I, I, you know, I, I wrote music at one point and I remember when I would listen back to some of the early stuff we wrote, it sounded like stuff from Faith and Wars, the real thing, because that's all I was listening to. Right. So it makes sense that if you're, you know, getting heavily into Green Day, it's going to come through, through osmosis, whatever it is, it's going to come out in your songwriting. I freaking love Green Day. Yeah. I always have, always will. Great band. They were like, they were the band that made me realize I want to play music for nice. sure. Nice. So they were like my North star and they still are being like, I want to be uh green day with girls. On it. Okay. Nice. But in terms of like where I want to take Detroit boys. So right. we like, um, so I wrote a bunch of <laughs> like great, I, you know, are you familiar with great value? No. Great? You okay. So, Target. Oh, great value. Yes, yes, yes. That great. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. So I wrote a lot of great value Green Day songs. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So if people aren't familiar with great value is great value is pretty much like the house brand for, I, I don't know what chain Target. is. I think it's, it's for like Target. Off, off brands. Yeah. Exactly. Generic for yeah, Target. Yeah, or generic for Target. Yeah. Or Walgreens or yes, exactly. Yeah. So great value Green Day songs. Okay. <laughs> um, 
I started like I they really honestly were like the only band I listened to. And then I got into more like 80s punk stuff and started writing some faster stuff. And then I also really loved like kind of the scene emo thing that was really happening in like 2013 and 14. Like I loved Pierce the Veil and Sleeping with Sirens. Um, I liked Of Mice and Men, Asking Alexandria. Yeah. Was a fan I was like really into and they were like pretty heavy. So um, I started writing like more heavy stuff, like less of the four chord, like pop. I hate the term pop punk. I think it's, I think it's so bastardized. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's definitely, you know, it serves a purpose and it is a pretty blunt explanation. Like you, you get it right away, but, um, but yeah, no, it is, it, it, it is a bit overused at this point for sure. Yeah. I, it's heartbreaking, especially <laughs> using it to describe green day. Yeah. No, no. Yes. It's pop and punk, but yeah. what pop punk means now? No, no. No. I, and, and the thing about Green Day, what I, you know, and um, my co-host Ryan is a big, big Green Day fan. I know he, when, when he talks about Green Day, you can see a gleam in his eye too, because it's one of his favorites. Um, what I love about Green Day is, you know, they're so much more than you think they are. Um, and that became evident with American Idiot, you know, and then, you know, a concept record like that. And then you, you know, that goes to Broadway and they, be, you know, becomes like, uh, it, it's an art record. You know what I mean? So there's a lot more to them than just these, you know, these three chord punk songs that that are poppy. You know, there's a lot more meaning. There's a lot more behind it. So but I think sometimes it's almost like the pop hooks are what you kind of use as the, literally a hook, you know, that reel the people in to mm -hmm. keep them there. And then once you have their attention, you can give them so much more. Yeah, that is a great way to describe them. There's so much more to Oh yeah, yeah. Green Day. I mean, listen, I I love Green Day, and at the base of it, what's incredible about Green Day is they're just a great fucking band. I mean, when the three of those guys get on stage, it's just it's it's magic, man. And they're so tight. I just saw their underplay at the Echoplex, their club okay. show they did. Oh, oh, how, was it good, dude? It was so sick. They yeah. did Dookie and American Idiot in full. Nice. I was wow. like, I, I have a cervical spine injury, so I am like okay. not supposed to be moshing anything. Okay. I was clobbering dudes like three <laughs> times my size to pulling teeth, like just absolutely wailing on guys to like a pop song. That, that's was, amazing. They were so good. Um, and then by the time they got to American Idiot, I was like hammered. So I like was like, yeah, but Jesus, pour me out from the back. Yeah, so, like, I can't get in the crowd. Also, last thing I'll say about Green Day. Yeah, for now, they are also very nice, good people. Well, that, I was going to say, have you had a chance to play with them? Have you had a chance to meet them? And if so, um, what was it like? I we've not played together. We played with Billy Joe's cover band at one point. Um, okay, we've actually known Billy since we were like sixteen. Um, because we played shows with his son's Jacobs band. Mm, yeah. And which is a band called Ultra Q. They are very, very good. Um, you should listen to them if you're listening to this. And also you. It's they're like my favorite band. They're amazing. Um, okay. We went on our first tour with them, and Billy saw us. And then he is kind of. I kind of credit him. Not even kind of. I I credit Billy Joe for kind of propelling us into from like local band to band band. Yeah. Dude, mosquitoes want you so bad right now. Oh <laughs> my god. It is rampant right now. What is going on? This is disgusting. Okay, I apologize. It's okay. Um, so Billy bought a shirt and then he posted it on Instagram and was like, destroy boys. Oh, uh, so 16 year old Green Day fan. Uh, so that happens. And right. so tell me when that happens, he posts himself in the shirt or holding it up or whatever. Um, what does that do to you guys social wise? That must you must just see a, a spike. Oh um, yeah, it was insane. Yeah, it was. Um, it was August thirteenth, two thousand sixteen. I'll like never forget it. I love it. I it love was. It. So, we were on our first like tour ever, you know, which is we're from Sacramento, so we drove to all the cities that were like a hundred miles and less away. Yeah, and then drove back home every night because we couldn't yeah. afford. Well. Sure, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just incredible, and that kind of got us. And then also. When he did that, when he got the shirt, when we gave the shirt to him, he was doing an interview for Rolling Stone and, about Green Day's new record, Revolution Radio. And then he yeah. talked a tight, like for like a sentence about Destroy Boys and Rolling Stone. So that got press attention. Wow. So our first real article 
was in the Green Day feature in Rolling Stones. It doesn't get cooler than that when no, you're 16. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> Also now, if that happened to me now, I would lose my shit. Oh, sorry. Right. Lose no, no. My shit. You can you can swear. It's okay. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was really incredible, and I literally will never stop being grateful to him for that. He I is, love it. He's a great person, and we've seen we've seen him a lot over the years. I've seen Green Day like fifteen times, and I will see them fifteen hundred more times before I die. So we have a festival here in Montreal called Oceaga, which is kind of like Coachella, very similar. Right. You know, it's. It's a weekend of, um, you know, every band that's popping, every band that's hip. Um, and on the rock day, Green Day's headlining. It's Green Day, Rancid, Smashing Pumpkins. Um, so many great oh, bands are playing. That's, the, that's crazy because that's their tour lineup that they're doing right now. That's probably why that's, you know, I, and I believe it's usually around whatever's happening in Lollapalooza weekend usually happens around. Like we usually get whoever's at Lollapalooza will come to Oceaga in Montreal and vice versa. So, so it's uh, soon. Okay, cool. Yeah, October. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like the first week of October, first weekend of October. But it's great that they're going to be, because they are the perfect band to headline a festival like that. Because, you know, everybody knows them. Everybody um, can name you a few songs. And it's the kind of band that they're instantly recognizable. But it's still a massive audience for them that they're going to they're gonna gain more fans and younger fans. So yeah, um, I'm anyway, awesome. enough about Green Day, because obviously we love Green Day. I want to talk more about your band, because this is the fourth album. Um, it's on Hopeless Records, which uh, you know is a great label. Um, they have a, a ton of great bands, um, mm-hmm. and you know we've had Hopeless bands on here before. But cool. for you heading out on the road, I know you're. I think it's the 28th. You guys are going to be is in the UK or is you, 20, 27th of July. We will be in Milwaukee. Right. Um, on the 28th, you were playing a really cool show. Um, the the Milwaukee one is really cool. It's a Harley Davidson festival. That's, that was the one. Yeah. Tell yeah. me a bit about playing the Harley Davidson festival. And is that, are, 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 do any of you ride or, or is there anybody in the band that's like, this is fucking awesome. I mean, we're losing our mind because we're opening for the red hot chili peppers. Well, yeah, that's insane. And there's nothing more LA than that. I California, well, baby. That's as California as it gets is opening. Up for um, chili peppers. Yeah. It's, I mean, what an amazing special opportunity, right? Yeah. So incredible. That's one of our drummers' favorite or drummers' favorite bands. You know, I grew up on them. I, my dad loves them. I love them. We all do the snow hayo in the van <laughs> all the time. Um, there's also a great band called Otoboke Beaver from Japan that's playing that I've loved forever. Nice. Um, four girls, really good at guitar, really good at bass, really good at drums, really cool vocal, um, really cool songs, underrated often reduced to their gender, which yeah. I think is very unfair because they are a very innovative and cool band that I think is under rated. You yeah. know, it, it's funny because um, a lot of the bands that, uh, you know, there was a time and I would talk about this all the time on the show, like in the nineties, there was a time where music really felt like it was breaking boundaries and there were so many incredible female artists. Um, and I got to see L seven who I had never seen probably about six years ago, seven years ago. And they were just fucking amazing. Oh, and yeah. I, but I, I've never really looked at it like, and I know you, you kind of have to, but I've always looked at it as just like, this is a good band. And yes, if they're, you know, and uh, one of the bands that we, that, that, um, that we love here in Canada, you've probably heard of them, the beaches. Um, oh yeah. We yeah. were, you we were part of a Spotify campaign with them for their new playlist, Marrow. Yeah, they're fucking awesome. And, yeah. you know, I've known them for probably a decade now, maybe a little less. Uh, when they had their first gold single with T-shirt, like we were just so excited for them. And, of course, the focus is always it's an all-girl band. And it's a weird thing because I think it's important to put that focus, but I think it's also important to say, like, they're just a good fucking band. Um, it's nuanced. It, for it, sure. it really, really is. Um, but for you, uh, being, you know, a female guitar player, um, obviously you're influenced by all kinds of musicians, male or female or whatever. Um, is there one guitar player that you can cite? I, I don't know if it, if it, if it's Billy Joe, but is there one guitar player? <laughs> it, it's really Joe. Okay. So it's just a green day. Laughing. That's the reason I learned how to play power chord. Right. And that's pretty right. much all I do. Right. Okay. Um, so it's, a, so it really is. Um, it really is him. <laughs> I'm, I'm really about it, dude. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I, uh, I also love Brody doll. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, 
the the idea of getting on the road supporting a new record um playing new songs for people do you guys like do you get nervous about that or is it the kind of thing where you're just like we've been sitting on these songs for a while because it seems like this record's been ready for a bit um we've been working on it for two years that's what i mean so now that you're able to go and play these songs for the world and of course it always seems to be you know you have to have this element of surprise before you release and and you trickle stuff out a little bit at a time mm -hmm. um the reaction to what you've put out so far has been really positive are you excited for people to be able to sit with the whole body of work put the headphones on and go okay i'm gonna listen to this whole record yeah. and two-parter that and then are you excited to be able to actually play these songs live and and you know do all the stuff you think needs to be done while you're playing this live, like whatever, you know, whatever jump, whatever windmill strum, anything like it, it, cause I know, I know musicians, when you talk to them, like there is two parts, there's the written, like it's written, it's done. Now I got to think about how I'm going to perform this. And depending yeah. on the complexity of the band, some bands will be like, you know, if you're a rush, you know, you're Getty Lee and you're like, well, I've got to fucking sing. I got to go like this and I got to figure out keyboard parts. Mm -hmm. But if you're Violet, is it just like, I'm going to fucking just rip power chords. And then it's more about like the aggressivity of it. So tell me about the new music, playing it for the first time, and then the anticipation of people hearing it for the first time. When it comes, so I think Destroy Boys is primarily like a live band. That's feedback I get a lot, is that right. we are like um, a live act. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think our records are great, but I think a huge appeal of our band is how we are live. And a lot of that is just how excited we are and a lot of it is also owed to our fans who are an amazing crowd and are very enthusiastic and sweet, but we take our live show really, I can curse, right? Yeah. Fucking right. You can really fucking seriously. Like for real. Yeah. We like do, I mean, we're very young, so it's hard because we only, the only knowledge we have is things we've experienced. Right. So we learn through all these mistakes. So we study all the, greats how they do their shows and we added all these transitions and all this stuff like for the last few years and now we're preparing for this era of destroy boys live touring yeah and it's more complicated than it's ever been because we are a band that is constantly holding ourselves to a very very high standard right um which i think one wouldn't immediately think that based on you know like you know it's two guitars, bass and drums and three vocal, you know, yeah. it's like a rock band, but yeah. there's so much work that goes into that for us. And then we also have keyboards now and we were considering like, or we're incorporating a metronome into our live performance because we have in years now. And it's like right. just all these things that are important to us to be able to execute the songs at the highest level, because also the record, like you said, is our, by far our most musically ambitious record mm. um s sonically musically everything yeah so performing that we have to exceed what we did on the record right we're like a live band sure so it's gonna be hard because i think that the record is really good and our producer carlos de la garza did a great job of making it sound great and we are holding ourselves to the standard of we have to exceed how the record sounds yeah. live, which right. is hard because there's yeah. 800,000 tracks on every song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so a lot of it comes down to, you know, pedal choice, amp choice, yes, front of house, getting up, having a good front of house person that can we have a know, great crew. We're very lucky. That's what you need. And especially if you're running in ears, you, you want to make sure whoever's holding you down on your monitor board or uh, that, or whatever, you know, it's, that you're no, feeling you don't have a mons person wow yeah i mean free ball yeah so you, everything's like preset yeah but still when you run in ears it's it's fun when it, it's cool when you run in ears because all of a sudden a lot of bands most bands when they do run in ears just go from here to here because they can finally hear everything and you're like oh shit and then you realize yeah. oh man like wow we need to really tighten things up or oh, we're yeah. gonna be so much better now that we can hear ourselves yeah i think a lot of destroy boys early live performances were about the energy Mm, of course. And that's something that we want to continue to carry, but yeah. also be able to execute musically, which is a really fine line to walk. Yeah. Um, I also have a severe spine injury from touring and thrashing my fucking head around for 10 years. Yeah. Um, since I was 15 to now. So it's like, I can't be doing all my weird jumps and flips and shit. You gotta be I careful. Yeah. 
um, which is weird. I feel really old. I'm 24, and like I feel since we've been doing it for so long, I feel like I'm 60. I, I hate to break it to you, but it just gets fucking worse. So take care of yourself. Right. Now. And, and as much as just right. learn, learn like a, a firm plant, you know, and a good head groove can go a long way. Yeah. And, you know, just, yeah, maybe, maybe play to like, maybe play those movements. Like you're in a stadium. What is, so <laughs> is that my doctor, like team, my doctors and my physical therapist both separately yeah. told me, they basically told me, in their own words that I have to get better at guitar because the, my spine condition is yeah. a lot of it's caused by like the downward, like looking down. Right. Sure. sure. Like you need to look straight ahead. I'm like, okay, so I need to fucking memorize my fretboard is what you're saying. Great. Fine. I'll finally do it. Yeah. yeah. So I have to look ahead. So I have to like get better at just memorizing where the stuff is. Right. Yeah. No, no, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, um, look, You'll get it. You'll figure it out. But um, but don't kill yourself for it. It's not worth it. Because yeah. A lot, that will mean that there will be no Destroy Boys live shows when you're 35, and we want that. <laughs> yeah. I um, I just had a procedure done um, where they injected a bunch of stuff into my spine, and I'm also in physical therapy and doing, like, acupuncture and stuff, so it's better. Okay. I've been pain-free for, like, a few days now, so Good. that's new and awesome. Good. Well, listen, I, I, I wish you nothing but the best. Um, the new record comes out August 9th, Funeral Soundtrack number 4. Mm-hmm. Um, band's Hitting the Road. You will be in Montreal November 12th at Théâtre Fermont. I will make sure that I'm there because I want to see this band live. I would love and, to meet you. That'd be and so it would be, and it, I love Montreal. Yeah, well, I mean, let's let's face it. It's the greatest city in North America. I mean, come on. <laughs> Sorry. And, we have, and we have so many great bands. We have so, I'm glad I wasn't inside of that T-shirt. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> We have so many great bands from Canada um, that I think there's a, there's a thing happening right now um, in rock and roll. And I've been saying it for a while. There's a, a wave of younger bands that every time somebody says, oh, rock's dead. I'm like, you have no fucking idea what's under. There's always an underbelly of, of bands that are like come bubbling under the surface. And, and I think you guys are a part of that. So um, I think I'm, it's more live than it's ever been. Yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. And I think rock and roll is always going to be. Well, I think rock's in a good in a good place, a lot better than people think it's in. Yes, that's a way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think the allure of the guitar, um, no matter what it does to your body after playing it for a while, it, there's going to always be some kid that's going to go into a guitar, you know, a music store, see, you know, a Gibson on the wall, and go, "I want that," or, or, or a Fender or whatever, and they're going to play guitar, and it's going to yeah. be, and hopefully, the same way Green Day did that for you, you can do that for some young kid that walks into oh. a record store or a, into a music store, you know. That would be so sweet. I will let you get off the porch so you don't get eaten anymore. <laughs> I'm getting absolutely <laughs> cannibalized by these guys. It's insane. But thank you for taking the time. Oh, that doesn't make sense. But Be safe out there and, and good luck with everything, okay? It was very nice to meet you. Thank you so you, much. You too. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye. So yeah, as she was going on and on about Green Day, I realized I can listen to people talk about Green Day all day. Yeah. And especially with the age gap between us, it's it's interesting that, you know, music, it, it doesn't matter when you find a band. And that's the cool part about it. Once it's in the ether, it belongs yeah. to the world and it's up to you to discover it. Some 10-year-old right now can discover the Rolling Stones or even yeah. Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons at any time, you yeah. know? And then it becomes, and, and what's great is that, you know, you know what it's like when you get into a band, especially if you're, let's say 14, 15, and you just, you're all encompassed, you're all in, you go yeah. by the shirt, you look for the posters. And it's fun to see people get into bands that you've gotten into when you were their age and see that whole thing happening. Yeah. I remember getting into Led Zeppelin and all the old heads in my neighborhood were like, yeah, man, Led Zeppelin. I saw them at the Montreal Forum. Yeah, Led Zeppelin. I was there on this tour. And Pink Floyd. Yeah, I saw the Wall Tour. And things that, you know, even a 20-year difference, um, yeah. not even 20, sometimes even 10, 15-year difference can make all the difference. And I'm seeing that now with Nirvana, um, with all the grunge bands, uh, a lot of the new metal stuff. People are like, oh, man, God, Corn are incredible. Like, I'm like, yeah, well, I, you know, I saw Corn way back when. And Deftones, man, Deftones are like legends. And like they get into Deftones. I'm like, yeah, I saw Deftones play at Cabaret. Like, and they're like, what? Yeah, in front of 400 <laughs> people. So you become one of those people. So um, I, yeah. I, I, I would be the same way. I would have joined the chat with you guys and been like, I saw Green Day at Edge Fest in 1999. Yeah, I played I played that Edge Fest. Or, or 1998, 98, was it? 98, 98. 
Moist was there and yeah. Biff naked. Yeah, yeah. sure, exactly. <laughs> I, and 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 yeah, I was there. Um, and it was there. it was uh, I played that. So yes, it's those kind of conversations. So um, that was really really a fun one to have with Violet. And uh, definitely check out the new album if you have not yet. Funeral soundtrack number four, and they will be playing at Théâtre Fermont on November twelfth. Ryan, they're going to be playing with Choke Cherry. And uh, tickets are on sale now uh, at Avengers. Such Dots. creative yeah. names, yeah. right? You know, <laughs> such creative names. Like you know, every every punk band back in the day was something authority or whatever. But we got like uh, choking and destroy boys. It's pretty cool, you know. It, it just goes to show there's enough words in the human in the English language to uh, you know uh, still turn some heads. Yeah, I know. Totally. Yeah. All right. So uh, thank you again for joining us. Please. We really, really appreciate you. Like, subscribe, tell all your friends about this podcast. We love doing it and we're going to be doing a lot of great stuff coming up. And uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here on this journey with us. Uh, I'd like to thank my co-host, Ryan Stick. I would like to thank my producer and our producer, Julia Kajerski. Uh, thanks to our friends at Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour, Studio House Designs, and of course, Audio Technica Canada, and all of you for joining us. And until next time, we'll see you on the Rockman Power Hour. Hey, thanks so much for watching the podcast. We really appreciate your support. And if you're enjoying the podcast, click this link right over here to watch the next episode and click right over here and subscribe. And that way you won't miss anything.